For years, I don't know if I would have described Resident Evil as one of my favorite series. But, looking back, it is one that I have some of the most fondest memories playing. Good sentence. <laughs> um, it's such a weird story. I never used to be into horror. I never used to be interested in horror games. I did not like scary things. But I always had this weird affinity for the genre because like one of the first stories I ever wrote that was like a cohesive story was when I was nine and it was about zombies. <laughs> um, I, I, I really liked like Scooby-Doo and some episodes of Johnny Quest that were right in my speed. Courage the Cowardly Dog was like one of my favorite cartoons. Um, but anytime it was like horror movie night with my sister or mother, I was not... I was not a part of that. I was in, I was going to be in my bedroom doing something else <laughs> um, because I did not want any part of that. Uh, I did not, I did not like that. I was a scaredy cat. So when my sister got her first serious boyfriend towards the end of high school, um, we started bonding over video games, sort of, kind of. Um, he, uh, was the one that, that sort of took me through Ocarina of Time for the first time, um, because I was shit at the game and I was also scared, <laughs> so, um, like, of, of everything in that game, um, so he, he, you know, he played that on the N64, so he played the crap out of, out of that one, um, he helped me through a, a couple of different games that I was, I had never beat games until, <laughs> until much later in my life, so, um, you know, he helped with those. Um, and then one day he brought over some games. Uh, he brought over two games for the GameCube. Uh, one was The Sims, Bustin' Out. And the other was Resident Evil 4. Yeah, I think you can see where this is going. I played me a shit ton of The Sims! Um... No, uh, I, I did, because I was really not... I looked at Resident Evil 4, I'm like, that's cool, man. Thanks for bringing this over. Not really interested in it, you know. Um, I, I didn't say that part out loud, but uh, I was very... Uh, <laughs> that's what I was thinking on the inside. I was like, The Sims, though, that's cool. I can simulate getting a, a girlfriend, a middle school girlfriend in real time. There's a hair somewhere. I'm getting a haircut after this, probably. I keep having to tell myself that's going to happen or it doesn't. It's really annoying. It's like there's definitely one behind my glasses on my face somewhere. Hi, welcome to professionalism. This is this is what we do here. Um, anyways, so yeah, I think one night he's like, all right, screw this, man. I have to show you Resident Evil 4. And he did. And I remember exactly what part of the game it was. It was uh, chapter 5-3 where you fight Krauser. And I remember him showing me that part and I was like, huh. Okay, that, that's that's kind of cool. And he must have shown me New Game Plus because that's what he directed me to and that's when I started playing Resident Evil 4. Um, I still was not very good at it, but it was kind of fun to shoot zombies. I had never really played like a shooter before. I had played some of Metroid Prime Echoes, but in that game it doesn't give you the visceral satisfaction of shooting a dude in the face and he goes, Oh, shit. <laughs> um like Resident Evil 4 does. Um, how old was I at that point? Probably like 12. I was a little young yet for Resident Evil 4, uh, regardless of, of uh, how emotionally mature I was or whatever at the time. Um, but yeah, I remember playing that and like, you know, um, I think I at some point came to like enough. I think it was when my friend uh, Brad came over and was also playing it and was like, this game is cool, dude. Um, that I really started liking it. I, I think, well, actually, my, I, you know, my neighbor, we must have played it after, it must have been at a point where, like, the, yeah, I guess the early ban would have been, like, 2006 or 7? This doesn't feel like it fits right in the timeline. But, yeah, at some point I must have played. <laughs> um, of course, the ban didn't have to be around for Brad to be around, or Tyler. Because Tyler lives, lives next door and I did bowling and bread. Sorry, my human timeline is, is a little messed up. Um, yeah, I so... Okay, anyways, whatever. Brad must have played it and thought it was cool. Um, and then I must have thought it was cool because I didn't want to look lame in front of my friends. 
Um, so eventually, um, I got the, uh, damn it, every time, this one, the Resident Evil 4 Player's Choice Edition for the GameCube. <laughs> Um, so now I have my own copy of Resident Evil 4 to play whenever I want. I still have never played the game like straight up because I just wanted to play a new game plus because I was shit at the game. Um, anyways, my sister and her first boyfriend break up and it is a bad time for literally everyone involved. Um, so it's a good thing that I have Resident Evil 4 collectors you know it might be different actually <laughs> now that i think about it you ever just like try to remember things in the exact order that they happen in order to tell a story it's really hard um i think he may have gone first because when obviously when he broke up with her the games went with him um eventually um so i was i, I may have been left without resident evil 4 for a little while and then i think my sister may have gotten me resident evil 4 for a player's a player's choice edition um so that i would have it because she knew that i enjoyed the game and with him no longer being around i guess she kind of felt like it was her fault so uh i think that's what happened actually um because that makes a lot more sense to me and that for some reason triggers a yes in my in my brain i got resident evil 4 player's choice edition and that's a good thing um my sister as you do uh eventually got another boyfriend um kind of a funny story about that <laughs> based on a uh a, a musical which you, you you can't make this shit up um hilarious shit i'm just sorry i had to take a minute to think about how hilarious that moment was in life <laughs> man anyways uh her second boyfriend was, was uh actually rather a bit different from from the first um he was he was sort of shy and stoic a little socially awkward and you kind of learned why as it went on but um you know he was just kind of chilling but he liked spending time at our house uh, uh, eventually once he realized he was he was welcome and you know he just had to bring his own vegetarian food um you know, um, I, I think the first thing that happened was, um, he caught me playing, um, Lego Star Wars. I was, like, 14 at this point, by the way. Um, so, Lego Star Wars, not exactly, uh, <laughs> a game in my age group. I, I distinctly remember the first, uh, Lego Star Wars because, um, I got it from Best Buy because I got gift cards every year for Christmas. So, I got it from Best Buy. Um, along with System of a Down Mesmerize. So I have memories of Lego Star Wars and System of a Down at the same time, which is just fantastic, honestly. Um, two things that really do not belong together, but, uh, you know, in my life, of course. Um, Lego Star Wars was a great game to start with co-op, um, and it was, uh, it, was, it was fun, and we started to bond over it, although I think he was kind of like, wow, this is a little bit dumb. I don't know why this kid is, uh, you know playing Lego Star Wars, um, but one day, the new boyfriend, uh, walks in, and, um, either looks at my games and finds Resident Evil 4 and is like, what is this, or he caught me playing, or he caught me and Brad playing it, um, either one, I don't know which one it is, memories are gone at this point, you know how long ago this was, this was like, <laughs> 17, 18, uh, 17, no, I think 16, 17 years ago. It's been a while, man. Come on. Um, anyways, one day, uh, he checks out Resident Evil 4. He's never played it before. He thought it looked interesting, but, you know, he didn't really have a... I don't think he had a system for it or knew that he had a system for it. He always thought it was mildly interesting, but, you know, whatever. So, uh, he starts playing Resident Evil 4. And he gets hooked on Resident Evil 4. He really enjoys playing the game. Um, he plays it from the beginning for the first time that I've seen. Because, um, you know, we didn't have Let's Plays back then or whatever. Um, so he plays it, you know, from the beginning, first round, no New Game Plus. The first time I've ever seen that, because I'm always walking around with, you know, a, a fully powered striker and a, a fully powered broken butterfly and all that stuff. And all you could ever need, really. Um... 
so uh yeah he gets hooked and we uh we bonded over resident evil 4 he was like i said he was he was very distant he wasn't as outgoing as her first boyfriend did not have that kind of charisma going on but um you know he was smart he was he was uh you know he was very stoic um didn't really open up a lot until later until he really grew comfortable with us but um you know it was cool and i was relieved that he would play video games with me because my sister's boyfriend playing video video games with me before was like a nice thing even though he kicked the shit out of me in smash brothers um which is a scar on my psyche that i will uh never unlive um this new guy had never played smash so um easy fucking pickings for me baby um anyways uh no, he really enjoyed Resident Evil 4, and we bonded over it because we had a good time playing it, and, and like, he would come over, and he would want to hang out and play Resident Evil 4. I'm not doing anything fucking important. I'm fucking 15. Who cares? Um, so we played a lot of it, and it was it was really cool. Um, I remember that one of the first gifts, this is like, you know, you only remember so many gifts that you give people, especially when you're young, um, but I remember this was, like, one of the first gifts that I remember giving to someone. Uh, may have even bought it with my own money, um, but Resident Evil 4 for PS2, um, I gave him that for Christmas one year, um, and I still remember that because it was like a gift that I gave someone that I remember that I came up with all on my own, I probably bought all on my own, I did it, like, it was like one of the first fully realized gifts that I gave and uh let me tell you Resident Evil 4 when you're looking for gifts is like the gift that keeps on giving because boy did it come out for every fucking system ever um so yeah uh I gave him that um I, I don't think he played it all that much because well first of all for the first couple of years his PS2 was at my house because uh Kingdom Hearts <laughs> that's a whole other story um yeah I guess that happened at some point huh I wonder, I don't know what the timeline is, is on that, and I ain't even gonna fucking try. Um, I know that the Kingdom Hearts, well, yeah, I guess that happened pretty early on, because Kingdom Hearts 2 had to have been, like, new, so it had to be 2006 or 7. Man, I played Kingdom Hearts 2 kind of late, didn't I? Um, anyways, <laughs> I said we're not getting into that. Um, but yeah, I bought him that, and uh, that was cool, you know. And, uh, you know, things went on. They they kept dating, and um, I was, uh, you know, uh, kept playing games and whatnot. The Wii came out. That was cool. Um, played, played a couple of Wii games here and there, you know. Um, I remember distinctly this one day, um, he and, and myself and my dad were trimming bushes. And I don't know if it was at my house or if they had already moved into their house. Um, I, I think it was here um, because we used to have these tall bushes um, on the side of our yard. We don't have them anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I remember talking about it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I think they made Resident Evil 4 for the Wii. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, did they? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool because you can use the pointer to aim. And he's like, yeah, that actually sounds kind of cool. I wonder if it's better than Red Steel because <laughs> Red Steel. Um who remembers Red Steel, right? Um, and he was like, yeah, that, sound, that sounds pretty cool. And uh, we made the decision, and we went to Walmart, and we bought Resident Evil 4 for the Wii. Uh, I, I think my sister was uh, not pleased with that decision, but uh, we spent the rest of the day fucking banging out RE4 for the Wii. And let me tell you, I just, I remember that distinctly. Because, um, like, again, we started from zero, um, did the first playthrough, played through separate ways for the first time. I don't know if he did it on the PS2 version or not. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think he did. Um, you know, got the, got the, um, Chicago typewriter, um, had a hilarious time realizing that the Chicago typewriter one shots everything in the game pretty much. Um, and then, uh, he did the professional mode playthrough, um, and we unlocked the PRL, which was also hilarious because that's just, it's just fucking hilarious. Um, 
you know, at this point in the game really isn't all that scary to me anymore. It's, it's just, it's just kind of whatever, um, you know, but it's a fun, it's a fun time. We loved Resident Evil 4 Wii. It was like, I think we both agree that it was like the best game ever, ever to be made because why wouldn't it be? Um, and honestly, to this day, it's still one of the most fun ways to play Resident Evil 4. Um, it's just, it's so good. Um, I'm very upset that the Switch version is not like the, the Wii version and it should be. Um, it's, it's fantastic. And I'm so stoked that we played that, um, together. I mean, it was fun. We had good times. We had fun laughing at it and, and, uh, just enjoying the series. RE4 at this point was one of the two Resident Evil games I played. The other one being Deadly Silence on the DS. Um, I had never played any of the other <laughs> Resident Evil games, uh, still at this point. Um, so time continues to go on. Um, the next generation is a little weird. You might expect that, oh man, Resident Evil 5 is coming and it's co-op, except neither of us have a PS3 or an Xbox, so we're kind of sunk on that one. I ended up playing Resident Evil 5 with uh, a friend um, at some point, um, but we ne but but me and um, my sister's boyfriend never got to never got to play it like sort of as it came out. Um, Actually, I think I played Resident Evil 5 at a couple of points before I played it with him, which felt a little dirty, um, frankly. Um, <laughs> but it was, you know, I mean, it was fun. Um, but we never really got to play it. And then Resident Evil 6 was coming out, and it too was co-op, and we're kind of like, all right, well, whatever, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a console for this, whatever, it's weird. Um, but yeah, time passes, you know. Um, this was a guy who, by the way, was like, living at our house basically <laughs> i mean he was always here um when he wasn't like working or, or doing school or whatever um because he ended up really liking it here you know his parents were a little uh awkward to get along with it at some points and uh, you know um we really became close so he was you know always sharing meals with us and, and very much adopted our our uh some of our mannerisms and our sense of humor and it was it was interesting because I, I distinctly remember the first time he walked in the door, he was very quiet, looked nervous as shit, was just kind of leaning forward. Um, he spoke in a way that was mildly alien. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know really how to describe it, but um, it was just, you know, he was, he, like I said, he didn't have the charisma of the first boyfriend. He was, he was pretty awkward. Um, but eventually he opened up and, you know, you could make him laugh. He would joke. He would, you know, you know, he would be pretty personal or candid about about certain things. And, he, you know, you could tell that that we made as a family sort of an impact on him because we were uh, very different from from his family. And, and you know, I, I met his, you know, his parents and his family. and We were very different. <laughs> um, so it was it was a very interesting sort of thing. Uh, that we became sort of this 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 found family, um, or whatever. I don't, I don't know that you would call it found family, but like you know, um, we were close. We were close. You know, we did everything together. So um, yeah, but eventually he moves out. Um, they got an apartment, and then they got a house. Um, I forgot about the apartment stage. That's probably when he played it for PS2. Um, maybe I don't know. Whatever. I'm a, at some point he moved out. Um, and that's probably why I never got a, a like, <laughs> you know, uh, PS3. Um, so that's, uh, you know, things progress there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's, we're getting past 2015 now. PS4 is coming out. Xbox One. And there's also something else coming out. And he wants to play this game when it comes out, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Resident Evil 7 is on the horizon. And it's going to reinvent the entire genre. It's going to start everything over. It's supposed to be really scary. Um, you know, is a, is a bit of a return to the form for the series. And uh, makes a go at the, at the type of... Uh, horror that was going viral at the time with let's plays and stuff like that rari 4 was a little bit late on the let's play scene but um it was still there and it was you know it was really making the rounds um 
so that was a thing. And I think I think it was the advent of Resident Evil 7 being so interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, they got me a PS4 for uh, my 25th birthday. Um, and that was cool. And they got me uh, Final Fantasy 15 because it was like the only game for the PS4 that I could think of that I, that I really wanted at the time. Um, and that was cool, but, uh, you know, he's kind of got other plans. I discover the PlayStation Store. I find RE5. I buy RE5. I give no shits whatsoever. Um, and finally, after like eight years, we get to play the game that was made for us. The game that we, like, always should have been playing. The game that we should have, like, been pros at by now. Because, like, we loved playing RE4, right? And I was always I was always there watching or, you know, playing uh, myself a little bit. I played a lot less than he did because he just liked playing. Um, you know, so the game that actually turns RE4 into a co-op, perfect for us. But we never got to play it until 2017 when I bought it and we played it. And it was a great fucking time i think by that point we had both seen the game so it wasn't like we were really doing anything new but to finally get to play it was like a rite of passage it was like all right this is this is cool now <laughs> like this is you know finally fi it feels like we can like put that puzzle piece in place and we're here and we're all right um and that is what what sparked him one day to walk in with resident evil 6 and resident evil 7 I don't remember if we, I, I think he put Resident Evil 6 aside. He's like, I'm not as interested in this one, but Resident Evil 7, I really want to play <laughs> like happy birthday and all. But like, this is why we bought you a PS4, <laughs> which is perfect. Um, so he uh, he puts in Resident Evil 7 and he hands me the controller and he says, I've seen the beginning. You're going to play it. <laughs> and what ensued was like the funniest fucking two hours of my entire life. <laughs> um, I had I had known of streaming at the time and I had done like a couple of near automata streams or something. I think I did like one stream of uh, Final Fantasy 15 and whatnot. Um, you know, uh, but man, I wish I had been streaming that day because my reaction to the beginning of that game was goddamn hilarious i was scared out of my fucking mind <laughs> i was like i was like i do not want to do that. i was playing this in a broad daylight too i was like i don't want to do this i don't fucking do this like it was so funny all the different signs all the different things that were like bad i was like nah -uh, no sir not happening <laughs> i still remember very much the first time like there was you like round a corner at one point and there's this like sculpture that has like a cow skull and a bunch of other bones and i'm like who the fuck would keep going at this point this is dumb um it took me two hours to play the prologue of of resident evil 7 um and we were in fucking stitches i had him in stitches he was like oh my god you fucking <laughs> wimpy shit um, this was like my first scary Resident Evil game, um, besides Deadly Silence, but Deadly Silence was like these cramped little pixels on a fucking DS, who cares, right? Um, but man, I tell you what, that was, that was a hilarious time. I remember being so goddamn freaked out, um, and it was just, it was just so funny, it was such a good time, it'll live on in my memory forever, um, and, um... He goes on and plays the rest of the game after, uh, you know, he's like, I kind of want to finish this game this century. Um, and eventually he gets to a point where he hasn't seen, you know, the game. Because um, he probably only saw the demo to that point. Um, so he ends up playing the rest of the game. We have a good time, you know. It, it, we, uh, you know, we we have that childlike wonder again at, the, at the, all the things that this game throws at us. And it's, it's uh, you know, it was a very fun time. I remember it. I remember it well. I remember like reacting to you know Marguerite's true form and, and and like being like this is a weird saw section of the game and you know being able to appreciate the design more. You know we're both older and you know we had a lot of fun with it. Um, <laughs> and then we played fucking Resident Evil Six after that, which is the 
the way to play the series, honestly. Um, and I remember we had a we had a fantastic time with it. That game is a laugh and a half. Let me tell you what, son. Oh my god. Um, especially coming off of Resident Evil Seven, um, we had a fantastic time with that game. I remember we played Leon's campaign first because, of course, um, and just like. The weird physics in that game, how smooth and bouncy everything is, and by that I mean, yes, uh, Deborah's ass. Um, that sounds weird out of context. <laughs> the way I said that with like a pause, I like the PTSD, but that is a very weird section of the game where you, where she's like carrying her on her back and she's like, got these weird ass jiggle physics. Weird. Um, but I remember, like, I, I think one of the hardest. I, the hardest I've ever laughed at a game was we play, We were playing, it was like chapter two or three of Leon's story in the graveyard. And at some point, I figure out that you can not only jump backwards onto the ground, but you can like scoot on your ass in that game and crawl forward while aiming. And when I figured out you could do that, we fucking lost it. We fucking lost our shit. It was hilarious. I, it's not as hilarious as I'm making it sound, obviously. Um, it was more It was more hilarious than that. But, like, obviously, can't replicate that. Um, you had to be there. But it was... I, we were dying. We were dying. It was, it was, like, the most amazing moment in gaming history. Because it looked so fucking stupid. The way you could look over and see your partner literally scooting along on their ass in this graveyard as dogs jumped over them. It proved to be this, like, effective strategy because the dogs in that graveyard couldn't get you if you were on the ground. It was, it was, it was amazing. Um, I just, I, <laughs> so, so fun playing RE6. Um... We never actually finished that game. I, I think we did. We only made it like al like almost to the ending of Chris's story. I don't think we ever beat it. Um, I think at that point there were like other games coming out that we were playing. One of which was The Last of Us. You know, RE4 2.0. Um, and I remember, you know, he really wanted to play it. Um, so he bought it and he brought it over. And, um, you know, he... Uh, you know, he played through it, and I watched for the most part. I was like, I don't know that I'm super interested in this game, but playing through it and watching him play through it was was fun. It was like the old good old RE4 days where you didn't really know it was coming, and it was very much like the Resident Evil 4 of its day. So, you know, we had a good time playing that one too. Um, you know, uh, and that was we had a, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with the the series um so in late 2018 um or early 2019 i don't remember um he and my sister divorced and it was not great um i know it I'm not really going to talk about it a whole lot. Um, there's, I guess, somewhat thankfully, not a whole lot to talk about on my end. But it kind of sucked for everyone involved. Um, you know, for our family who had, you know, really, uh, you know, taken him in. And, you know, he basically lived here for a couple of years. And, you know, um, helping them with their apartment and, and their house and... Uh, you know, vacations and, and whatnot, and it just, I don't know, um, you know, he was in our lives for 10 years, over, over 10 years, you know, um, sometimes in and out, they they had, you know, they had broken up before, and, but, you know, he came back, and he was in our lives for 10 years, you know, and, uh, for me, that's 10 out of 25. That's a huge chunk of, you know, of my life that, that, you know, that he was there. And, um, um, you know, he became really important to me in particular because after, you know, after the band broke up and I finished high school, it's like, I didn't have any friends anymore. Um, I had played video games with friends every Saturday. Um, 
you know, after band practice. And once that stopped, I, I didn't really play games with friends anymore. Um, I mean, I had a friend that I had for about a year after college. Um, but after that, I really didn't have any friends um, that would come over and, you know, play video games with me. Um, and, uh, you know, that sucked. But he would still come over and play video games. And especially after... I think a reason they bought the PS4 was so that he would, you know, he had a reason to come over again um, and play games with me because, you know, after they moved into their house and whatnot, you know, they didn't come over as much. I We didn't see them quite as much. And I, I think he missed it, too. And I think that's a big reason why they, they got me the PS4 was so that he had a reason to do that. And I think one of the reasons I enjoyed Resident Evil 5, 6 and 7 so much was because of that was because at this point there were these feelings of nostalgia from almost 10 years ago of just us two playing a game um, and uh, having a good time and just, you know, playing it for hours and hours and hours, spending an entire Sunday on it um, and spending time together. And, uh, you know, now I, I really don't have that even, um, which is unfortunate, you know. Uh, so it's a bit hard to to put into words what it feels like to lose a presence like that. Um, and I think one of the hardest parts is like um, I don't know. I uh, we you know me and me and my mom and my dad wasn't you know really it didn't it didn't feel anything um but you know we never really got to say goodbye to him because you know it, it, they were having issues and you know we weren't a part of that and probably for the best that we weren't involved but at the same time you know we we still we lost someone and the feeling of having someone exit your life and having nothing to do with it and yet it being a conflict of interest to even like talk to them anymore is it's pretty tough you know it sucks um and uh yeah that happened And a couple years later, in 2021, Resident Evil Village came out. I had been streaming for over a year at that point. And um, I remember seeing the trailers and uh, I was excited about it because it looked like a really good game. And I loved Resident Evil. And... Um, you know, I was like, you know what? When that game comes out, I'm going to stream it blind. Uh, up to that point, there was no Resident Evil game that I could stream blind. I had streamed 4 a couple of times for Halloween. Or I, I guess only one time at that point. But I had streamed 4 for Halloween. No, it was a couple of times because 4 was one of those games I streamed before I started streaming proper in 2020. Um, because I love the game. Um, so, uh, yeah... Um, I was like, I'm totally going to stream Resident Evil Village. And I did. And, um, I loved, I loved the game. It was a really awesome game. I had a great time playing it. Um, I had a great time streaming it. It was very cathartic to get to do the thing that I wanted to do for an audience. And that was sort of like recreate that, that same, um, magic that happened when I, uh, first played Resident Evil 7 um and <laughs> that pretty much happened with House Beneviento for the first time because it took me about two hours to do House Beneviento because I kept getting scared um I looked things up which kind of diminished it I would have probably had a panic attack and died if I didn't though because that shit was scary um so 
uh, yeah, I absolutely loved playing Resident Evil Village. It was it was a very awesome game. I loved it. It reminded me of Resident Evil Four, but like scarier. Um, oh, it was it was awesome, um, and I was so happy to stream it. And I think I told this whole story at the end of that because I was enjoying the game, but there was really something missing um the whole time and i was like this just feels weird to me and um you know eventually i started to realize what it was and it was this was the first resident evil game that i was playing on my own all all on my own um I didn't have anyone to take over for me. I didn't have anyone to to bounce off of in person. And uh, it was it was my first time playing effectively alone. Now I wasn't alone because I was streaming, but it was a very different Resident Evil sort of experience. And I kept thinking about it. You know, and I kept thinking, this is so weird, you know, and this is my first time playing a Resident Evil game without him, essentially. And it just, it didn't feel right. And, um, yeah, it just reminded me of how... Sometimes people don't stay in your life and you have absolutely no control over it. And I still think about him. Um, I thought about it again when going through the Resident Evil 4 remake earlier this year. And uh, I just thought about how cool it would have been to get to... To play that with him. And... Uh, it just experience how much it changed about the game that we loved and, you know, the game that we really bonded over as people. Um, and I, I think he would have been in, in awe of the, uh, you know, of the changes that they'd made and of the improvements and how much better the game was. I think, I think everything about that remake would be right up his alley. Um, and there's been a couple other things like that too. Um, Spider-Man 2018. Um, he loves Spider-Man. I remember one year buying him a, a giant Spider-Man poster thing. Um, and I know that he had like a collection of Spider-Man comics and, you know, he did like Spider-Man. And I remember even playing that game. It was weird because that game wasn't like we didn't really have any we didn't really like bond over Spider-Man or anything like that. But um, I remember at some point playing that game like there was just something weird in the back of my mind. And I and I thought about it. And at some point I was like, oh, my God. I wonder what he thinks of this game. And I'm like, my God, this game is amazing. He would love this game. And I'm sure he knew about it. Um, but, you know, um, I don't, I don't know that he, you know, I'm sure he knew about it and I'm sure he played it and I'm sure he did love it. And it's just like, yeah, but that would have been cool to, to play with, with alongside him. Like we had done with so many other games. Um, and I just like. When I have these thoughts and when I play these games and I and I miss him, I think about it and I'm like, you know, there's no way he doesn't know about these games. I'm sure that he played Spider-Man 2018. I'm sure that he played Resident Evil Village. And I'm sure that even if those last two aren't true, which I don't imagine because I know he has a PS4... I know for sure he was interested 
in the remake of Resident Evil 4. How could he not be? And, you know, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe, you know, he doesn't like video games anymore. Maybe he doesn't play them. Maybe, you know, he's got a new wife or whatever and she doesn't really care for the video games that much. Um, and so he just doesn't play them anymore. But I like to think that wherever he is, you know, whoever he's with, that he sees Resident Evil Village or the 4 remake or something like Spider-Man 2018 and for old time's sake he picks them up and he plays them and at some point there's that same feeling that I get like man he really would have liked this game. I don't really know how to close this out, um, but I really want to acknowledge the way that video games can bring people together um, and can break the ice and lighten the mood and um, really form bonds between people. Um, I was always so excited to get to play Resident Evil 4 with him. Um, and was super excited the re the rest of the way after, you know, we both sort of, you know, became adults and, and funded our own ventures into Resident Evil's past four, you know. Um, and I just, you know, I think about it because sometimes you don't get to decide those things. It's not even up to you. And that's totally unfair, but that's life. I don't know what the point of this is. I guess just enjoy your memories while you have them. And play Resident Evil because they're good games. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like 4 Remake is going to be the, the maybe the last time that I really feel that. It really hit me with Village because it was the first. And... Um, you know, with 4 Remake, it was the remake of the game that really brought us together. And um, I don't know how... I, I think that with every subsequent entry now, I'll feel that less. And um, But I think it'll always be there. I think any time I play a Resident Evil game, you know, I'll think of him and I'll think of Brad and I'll think of, you know, the people that I used to play these games with because now I'm on my own, you know. And I'm very glad, I'm very grateful that, uh, you know, I stream and that I have, uh, you know, I have Twitch and I have an audience and I have people that I can essentially play the, the Resident Evil games with, you know, so yeah, um, that's my story. <laughs> have a good day.